So welcome everybody to another Behind the Team. Today we're talking about Hammond the Scots again. Now before we delve into Robert the Bruce's history in the next few episodes, first I think you'll be remiss not to talk about the situation leading to the first Scottish War of Independence. So that'll be what we'll be doing today. So let's get into it. Now in 1286, the rightful King of Scotland, King Alexander III, died. And the situation leading to that was pretty hilarious. What happened is he married a very young French princess and he was out in another castle partying with his fellow nobles and all of that and got himself rather drunk. But during the night, against the advice of his advisors and everything, he wanted to ride back to his young wife in a storm. And so, well, he's the king, he did. And as he rode, his escort lost him and the next day they found his body and as the theory goes he had fallen off his horse and broke his neck. In fact, in the Victorian era they even erected a little monument on the area. Now the biggest problem with that is King Alexander III did not have a direct heir and this left the throne of Scotland pretty open. Thankfully, he still had a granddaughter in Norway, and she was called, well, the Maid of Norway. And to solve the situation of the crisis of inheriting the Scottish throne, it was agreed that she would marry Edward I Longshanks' son, Edward II, and together, this union, they would rule Scotland. And the interesting fact about this is, if that had really had happened, according to the rules of marriage at the time, Edward II would basically inherit his wife's lands because women were seen as property and their lands were seen as basically when they married someone everything that was theirs was the husband's so if that happened you could argue that Edward II basically would rule both England and Scotland and brought about the union of Britain far sooner than it should have in history but as history goes unfortunate situations happened and the maid of Norway died on her voyage to Scotland leaving the throne absolutely open. This led to a huge power vacuum rising from the woodwork many many claimants claiming that they should inherit the throne of Scotland. The two strongest claimants being Clan Balliol and Clan Bruce. And if left unchecked it would lead to what many saw as absolute total civil war in Scotland which was something nobody wanted. And thus to avoid this situation Everybody got together, the nobles and all, and they asked for help from the King of England, Edward I, Longshanks. Now the reason why they look to England is because Edward I is because one, he was the brother-in-law to King Alexander, related by marriage. And to all historical accounts, actually King Edward I and King Alexander seem to have gotten along, especially in personal messages. But of course we all know what would come and that King Edward I was always an opportunistic expander of his lands and would try to swallow up Scotland. But first let's get to know King Edward I. Now, of course his nickname was Longshanks and that was because he was actually 6 foot 2 in height at a point of time where most people were about 5 feet tall to 5 foot 3. He was not only a tall man, he was of course a very fit man he was a crusader who fought in the Holy Land. He was known as a very good commander. And another interesting fact is he's actually the first royal to habitually use English as his native tongue since 1066 in England. And he married a Spanish princess and had about 10 to 15 children. And from this marriage of 36 years, it's only after she died that he seemed to have really occupied his time with war. I mean, he was already fighting before that, but it seemed that after his wife died that he really focused his entire life's goal and energy into the wars that he would put himself into. So that was Edward Longshanks, and of course he was called to mediate on the situation and literally choose a successor to the throne of Scotland. So let's look at the two biggest claimants to the throne. The first is the Balliol clan. The Balliol clan had the most ancestry strong family link to King Alexander. They had the royal lineage, bloodline and so on. But they also had another thing going for them which was the commons. The commons was a clan with basically vice regal powers in the north of Scotland. So in a way you can see that by combination and they were related 
by f marriage the two families. Now on the other side, you got the Lords of Annadale, the Bruces. Now at the time, the Bruces were ruled by not Robert the Bruce, but by his father, the aptly named Bruce the Competitor. Love the fact that in the past, people were just named what they were. It's easy to understand what they were from their nicknames. Now a bit of a history lesson within the Bruce name, Bruce actually stands for the Norman the Bruce. On top of that, like many of these Scottish families and nobles at the time, the Bruces actually owned more land in England than they did in Scotland. And actually the lands in England earned them more money than the lands in Scotland. Thus, of course, you can see the situation why so much of the nobles in Scotland weren't really that loyal to the idea of Scotland. And also on top of that, that it was only about a generation of idea of Scotland as a kingdom actually was formed through military conquest and all of that. So from these two families, they both went to try to sway Edward I into choosing them. And Edward I went over and by all accounts, he brought in a lot of papers and evidence to choose a king. And from all accounts, it reads that Edward I didn't really care who sat on the throne as long as the person paid homage or would be loyal to him. And that's why actually he asked for he asked that everybody pay homage to him, the King of England. And when they refused, he actually said, if you don't, then I would produce another 11 claimants to the throne of Scotland, basically throwing it in civil war. So when it came down to it, the Bruces, the Commons and everybody were forced into it. And in the end, Clan Balliol won. John Balliol became the King of Scotland. And on top of that, to make his kingship somewhat mute, he also had to basically listen to his backers, which were the commons. So basically, as a king, he was pulled in so many ways and conflicting ways to please one, his supporters in England and his supporters in Scotland. And with the crowning of John Balliol of Scotland and him paying homage to Edward I, Longshanks, this situation leads itself to the first War of Scottish Independence, with of course the Bruces being not too happy about the whole situation and feeling that they had been wronged out their rightful claim as kings of Scotland. So next time we'll be moving on to the beginning of the history of Robert the Bruce. So subscribe, comment, thank you very much, till next word.